So my name is Gabriel Hogan. I'm a part-time PhD student with uh, Carl Guerin in DCU and with Marcus Helfrid at the IVI in Minute. And um, for my day job, I work with the DAP Center sponsored by SFI. My specific area of interest is in consent and consent withdrawal management. And for the duration of a cup of coffee, which I hope you have in front of you, I'm going to give an overview uh, of my research uh, at a high level. So why am I doing this? Well, GDPR is probably the single most impactful regulation that's been introduced since the advent of the internet uh, and latterly social media. Uh, the impact it's had on organizations' business models is profound and the, the problems it introduces for business are not trivial, not least the specter of potentially large fines which impact the bottom line. Uh, and what about us as individuals? Um, well, every day, you know, uh, all of us are as data subjects are asked for consent. Mostly this is in digital form, online or through an app. When we give our consent, some person system or process in the organization receives and manages our consent. Uh, and this typically involves some information systems for recording the personal identifiable information, what it's going to be used for, uh, i.e. the purpose and grant and withdrawal of the consent for this. It's not standard. No two organizations use the same processes, workflows, procedures, people, or information system structures to, to capture and manage this information. Add in the additional complexity when consent is withdrawn, and these systems, um, these systems are impacted in a non-trivial way. So uh, just pause for a second there. Go back. This is running. This isn't standard. Uh, no two organizations use the same, as I said. Uh, and basically the research is how can we help organizations to understand how fit for purpose their consent withdrawal management systems are. Um, people who grant their consent and external organizations that are responsible for more monitoring this, such as data protection commissioners, don't have a way to gauge how fit for purpose the consent withdrawal management systems are in an organization that they are trusting with their personal identifiable information. And this research hopes to provide a reliable fitness for purpose indicator to practitioners and participants of consent withdrawal. So GDPR has put um, consent of, of the processing of and managing of personal identifiable information at the center of privacy management research. Organizations must demonstrate the provenance of all the consents they receive, the purpose for that consent, and any withdrawal of that consent. Within this context, the frame of the research is shown here. Um, so the current state of the art in information systems for data protection and consent management is quite active. And it's distributed across the three information systems perspectives of technology, organization, and environment. Uh, however, the, there's a lot, while there's a lot of activity in both privacy and provenance research, it's predominantly technology led. And the wider aspects, i.e. the non-technology based information systems research doesn't have a great deal of literature. So the problem is summarized here. It's an information systems problem. The perception of the data subject is essential. There's a gap in the research between where this research can contribute to reducing by modeling the relationship between the business view, the technical view, and the customer view in consent management and consent withdrawal management. Apologies, this is on a timer rather than click for some reason. Um, so my research is focused on how the relationships between the technology, the organization and the data subject can be mapped to indicate the fitness for purpose of consent withdrawal management. So my research uses the technology organization environment framework developed by the Pietro et al to examine the relationships between these aspects of consent management and to try and understand the interdependencies that have to be reconciled in order to enable a fit for purpose consent and consent withdrawal management system. And specifically, there are three focus points that I'm looking at. Um, 
in the external task environment uh, around government regulation, the technology availability and characteristics, and formal and, and uh, informal uh, uh, structures that are in the organization. And more specifically on the ex external task environment, specifically GDPR and privacy regulation on consent withdrawal, and the data subjects perceived ease of use of systems that allow them to withdraw their consent. The relationships um, between these are the key interest areas for me, and hopefully being able to examine those uh, and look at them, um, I'll be able to see what those key uh, relationships contribute to the innovation decision making for uh, the, the consent withdrawal. To try and baseline the consent management process, I've developed the GDPR consent flow uh, conceptual model, which shows the potential exponential distribution of consent from one organization to others. This highlights the problem of withdrawal of consent when you look at the propagation of the grant of consent to additional organizations from the original consentee. And the difficulty um, is that once it's uh, propagated like that, withdrawals aren't necessarily propagated in the same way. And we end up with a problem of, um, with a problem of, <laughs> excuse me, uh, orphan consents, which are with organizations, but uh, the withdrawal um, indicator never makes it to those um, organizations. Um, I've developed an event driven process chain of the general consent uh, process as a baseline process using the architecture of integrated information systems approach. Um, and I'm developing that further with the, um, a number of universities, Trinity, DCU uh, and Maynooth to try and fully uh, flesh out what exactly their whole um, consent and consent withdrawal management systems look like and the dependencies there. So um, to summarize, um, the aim is to help uh, the universities that I've mentioned facilitate the propagation of data subject consent withdrawal to their ecosystem. Um, I'm looking, uh, I'm using the theoretical lens of technology in an organization and environment. Um, I, the approach I'm using is a contrast and compare uh, between the consent management processes in the universities. And uh, I'll be evaluating with the universities. Excuse me again. Uh, and hopefully produce an artifact that is both a, um, a, a process and a method uh, that provides a technology solution for uh, consent withdrawal management that enables a better picture of the fitness for purpose of their management systems. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, just a note from um, the IVI, uh, you can sign up to the newsletter, stay in touch, and the next uh, agenda for 2022 will be, uh, and the events there will be coming shortly. Thank you. Hello. Thanks very much, Gabriel. Um, are there any questions for Gabriel after that presentation? Hi, Gabriel. It's uh, Michael here. Thanks so much. That's really, uh, really uh, illuminating presentation and I think relevant for all the researchers uh, online. Um, can I ask if one of your outcomes or one of your ambitions might be that this would integrate with, say, the university or the various universities' ethics approval systems or data research and fieldwork data storage solutions such that um, researchers would have assurance that <clears throat> their permissions and consent uh, with their subjects was up to date and was maintainable in a, in a straightforward fashion. Yes, hopefully that, that would be the uh, some of the, the application spaces for that. Um, so in, in many of the universities, not all, uh, the data protection uh, statements and data impact assess data protection impact assessments and risk um, assessments are part of the ethics approval uh, procedures there. So it has a direct interface in there. Uh, secondly, most of 
what I'm seeing across the universities that I'm working with are um, very much policy um, based, policy and procedure based. That's not always clear to the researchers. In the first instance, they have to do, to do a bit of research and they have to actually go and look at all these policies, um, some of which are um, not to say tangential, but they, you know, they have a smaller impact, but they still have to be known about in order to appreciate all the things that you need to do. Uh, on the second side, then, the, um, the information systems structures, whether it's IT uh, specific or the policies and or the technical and organizational measures that need to be in place to allow for IT systems, IT security, uh, and that to be in place, um, you know, they need to be understood and appreciated on a wider level. And that's difficult. There's an awful lot of information there for researchers specifically. Um, and combine that then with the requirements for, and these are more uh, institutional requirements for anonymization, pseudo-anonymization, um, encryption, and all that side of things as well. So it, it adds up to more than a mouthful for a lot of researchers. So yes, hopefully, uh, what I'll be able to do, or what this research will be able to do is to look across the three universities that I'm working with, be able to identify the differences between them and how each of those differences, if they're solved, can help uh, enable a better overall uh, process around that. Great, thanks so much. I can't wait to see it in action. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Great, thank you. Mansoor, go ahead there. Okay. Okay. Gabriel, thank you very much for a nice presentation. Uh, we have been uh, discussing about uh, this constant management in our uh, earlier meetings as well. I was just wondering if you are considering if there is a, a, any change in the content. So you are dealing with uh, uh, developing a provenance for, uh, for the change in the content as well, or just the content withdrawal uh, kind of a thing? Uh, I'm mostly focused on consent withdrawal, but what I'm trying to do is to um, really provide a, a process for managing the consent withdrawal at the end of the day that is um, more in tune with the requirements of the data subject and also for the organizations to be able to internally say, yes, our uh, consent withdrawal process is fit for purpose, or this is what we could do to improve it. Okay, all right, thank yeah. you. The, the propagation of consent is specific area of interest, but it's not the, the end goal. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mansoor. Thank, thanks also from, from my side, Gabriel, for the interesting presentation and of course the, um, the timely topic, like current topic on consent. We all are bothered with these um, cookie approvals and we just approve it and then basically later we don't even know whatever we have approved on this. And I presume with data, data management is similar. And I really like that, that kind of withdrawal and the consequences in that chain of data exchange around to, to look at this. And of course that fits very well into uh, the newly launched uh, data governance program in power. I think that's a really big topic on privacy data sharing. And when we look at these more data markets, I think that concept could be really valuable in these more data markets when we actually share data maybe outside of the organizational um, boundaries and consent was given, withdrawn. So I really think that, that that's important. And also in the smart city space, uh, when we think about real-time data, uh, I think we need to find a mechanism to handle this in an efficient way. Um, and uh, particularly when we actually kind of not kind of um, static uh, or, or um, determined data flows. It's basically dynamically configured with real data. So I think this is, is important. Um, from my question is around uh, standards, because to me, it seems like on the end of the research, you have somewhere a protocol, a specification of that call it consent withdrawal mechanism. So the process model, what you showed, so that becomes a specification on this. Uh, have you considered, or maybe you're working already with the standards community, NSAI, for example, 
also the SC40 on um, uh, IT service management and, and data management. So it might fit very well into this as a specification, as a, as a standard basically in the long term uh, for this. Did you think about or consider this or? Yeah, I've considered it. And as a start, um, I'm working with Harsh. I think Harsh is um, in, in Trinity. Um, himself and myself are working on a, a W3C um, proposal group uh, where we're looking at uh, consent and consent management and privacy overall. And I'm hoping to make a contribution there around the consent withdrawal aspects of that. Uh, and we meet on a, a fortnightly basis on, on a Monday afternoon to try and, and it and it'll it'll probably go on for the next year or more. These things take uh, some time, but we have uh, outlined plans of what we want to achieve on a, a six monthly basis. So yes, standards are are important there, and there are some ISO standards there around um, technology privacy management and that side of things. Um, and there's more than one. Uh, but I think the standard that everybody has to try and achieve is, is on the legal side as well. And it's not just the GDPR. There's also in Ireland, there's the Data Protection Act, you know, 2018, the Data Sharing and Governance Act 2019. We've got EU regulations for electronic communications and networks and services. Um, we've got the new proposed Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act, which are coming into, you know, they're in the middle of discussion at the moment in, in the European Parliament, which are going to, again, change things as well. So it's a constantly shifting legal, um, what do you call it, perspective there. But there's also a constantly shifting technology perspective. Like, I mean, we're, get, we're getting privacy enhancing technologies coming out, which you know, it's one side of the coin. On the other side, we have the pixel technology, which is embedded in the pictures, which you don't even see or acknowledge. That's coming out. So again, all of these things are going on across the organization. But what I'm specifically interested in is the relationships between those um, at the end of the day and how those relationships enable um, the consent management process within the organization to to be better fit for purpose and and hopefully yeah contribute to the the standard side of things yeah th thanks gabriel it sounds really interesting and i'm pretty sure this is a really valuable contribution around that concept management and i think it fits very well into also that multi-stakeholder view you mentioned regulation and all this. so we need to consider if we want to really manage that consent in the efficient way all the perspectives so uh, yeah oh, that's fun thanks thanks Arcus. so hello gabriel and thanks for the presentation this is and just a, a question, Gabriel, on your notion of, of withdrawal. And I think this is somehow linked to Mansell's um, uh, question. I just want to understand how you see the case um, or a scenario where uh, I'm, a subject may not want to withdraw the consent completely, but just wants to modify. So rather than you have access to all my record, I want to have access to a soft part. So which is a more general case of, of, of withdrawal? Because yeah. you know that's actually subsumed from an abstract point of view, um, it actually subsumed the issue of complete withdrawal, which means I don't want you to see anything. So mm -hmm. from, you know, from whatever it is before, I change it to something else. Yeah. Right. So how do you, how do you, how do you see that middle ground? You know, is it in, in your, in your modeling or specification of the problem of, you know, of constant withdrawal? I just, I just wonder how you see that case. Well, it's, it's actually defined quite differently in, in GDPR. So withdrawal means, sorry, you don't have my consent anymore for anything. What okay. you're talking about there is restricted processes, yes. which is a specific area of uh, GDPR as well. So, and it comes in under an, a, a different route, uh, okay. effectively. Uh, they receive the request, uh, mm -hmm. The DPO will, or whoever has the data will receive the request and they'll deal with it. But it's a, it's a slightly um, it's a slightly different um, focus point for them. So yeah. it, regardless, it'll go the the journey through the through the system will be similar. It'll end up with whoever is custodian of the data at, at a particular time. And they will have to respond in kind. So just the same as a withdrawal has to be acknowledged, 
the restriction processing will have to be acknowledged and the effect on that processing will have to be implemented. So That's, it's a similar yeah. journey, but just a, a different outcome. Yeah, and, and my point, Gabriel, is that from a technical point of view or from a scientific point of view, that's that's actually a more general problem, and the complete withdrawal is a, it's a special case. So, yeah. when one is designing a solution to that, solving that problem mm -hmm. actually solves the issue of withdrawal as well. That's so that's something I'm just you know I'm yeah. teasing out here to say, of course, for GDPR it's about complete withdrawal, but a a more abstract form of that problem is I want to modify it, right, whatever that means, and if you solve that problem, you actually also think that solve problem of withdrawal. So. Um, that's maybe just for something that we want to consider in terms of technical application from a yeah. legal point of view. And yeah, I, I, I get that. Yeah. So to go from the specialized to the general. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So because the solution is, I mean, it, if it works for that, it works for the withdrawal as well, you know, really. Yeah. So of course, from a legal point of view, things are always very different from a technology point of view, or from a more abstract point of view of formulating that problem, you, 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 you know, you can, it can be neatly tackled just by saying, I want to modify that. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you very much. Just, Appreciate that. Are there any other questions? We probably have time for one more, maybe. Yeah, I can have uh, a question, Gabriel. Thanks, thanks for. Hey, uh, so, in practical terms, because. Uh, I always, uh, when I always go to a website, I receive this cookie information. It's always different. It always, and also sometimes when I give, uh, and I try, I try, of course, to uh, to select all the needed cookies, and it's a lot of work. And uh, so, first of all, it's, uh, it's always different. It takes a lot of time. And... Uh, uh, sometimes with the same websites, just they repeat uh, showing you so that they're kind of not storing really the information or the consent that you are giving. So uh, the, the question is, uh, from the practical point of view, do you think that your uh, your solution could uh, solve, could, could substitute, could be uh, used uni universally for having just one single interface for all, all the website and uh, so that and it would facilitate, of course, the consent and the withdrawal, if in, prat in practical terms. Um, well, I think there, there's a couple of, of aspects to that. Um, you know, one is, is the whole approach within the organizations. So um, certainly in the processes and procedures and policies that I've looked at in the universities, there's very much an emphasis in some of them on uh, privacy by design uh, and, um, you know, by default. Whereas, you know, as you've outlined, most organizations don't take those particular uh, philosophies to heart. So you get this disparity of uh, user interfaces which you're faced with. Uh, and also you get all the, the um, particularly on the cookies side of things, you get so many different type of interfaces I know for recently looking at, uh, for instance, BBC, um, they present it in a way where it's, uh, and I know it's outside the EU now, but they present uh, your, your consents in a way that, um, for instance, when you scroll down, sometimes the, the, uh, the click button is actually slightly off. Now, whether that's by design or not, it's hard to tell. You have this whole area of, uh, legitimate interest as well, which is an interesting um, aspect of it. But they all deviate from the, the privacy by design and by default uh, philosophy that certainly the universities seem to uh, be taking on board. So, you know, if, if organizations uh, want to be able to sort of, I'm not sure that they want to be able to standardize right across the board because there's so many different organizations and even some of the standards that are there, not organize, not, not all organizations adopt. So um, I'm sure there's all there's going to be something different. But will it help? Hopefully. I, I can't say until I've uh, you know worked a bit more with practitioners. Okay. Okay, thanks. 
So I think we'll wrap up there. That pretty much brings us up to two o'clock. But just to say thanks very much, Gabriel, for your presentation and for that Thank discussion. Um, and thanks everyone for attending. As Gabriel mentioned at the end, you can keep an eye on the IBI webinar and events pages and the Coffee and Talk page for upcoming events um, in 2022, spring 2022. Um, and in the meantime, the recording from today will be up online in the coming days. So thanks everyone. Thanks.